And uh, yeah. wait, wait, wait. Let's all stand. Get ready to enter in. Same through the ages, and you 
God, I pray, God, that there is a real thirst in your land in these days, Lord. God, I pray that the people will cry out. God, like a deer does pant for water, God, I hope our hunger and our longing, God, to be to drink from the living wells will continue, Lord. God, I know in my spirit there's going to be a remnant. God, there's going to be a people that are there, they're going to soar, God, even higher, God, than they've, than they've ever dreamed they could go, Lord. There is going to be such a remnant of people, Lord God, in this country, in this nation, Lord, that are there to believe in miracles, God, that are there to believe, God, that you're going to turn this thing around one more time, Lord. 
Father, we, those that know, have a I know it in their spirit that we win. That we win, God, and we should rejoice and we should sing and we should prophesy and shout like we're victors, Lord. Your word tells us that we're more than overcomers, God. Who can stand against us, Lord? Who can defeat us, Lord, when we stand in the all of our God? This evening, Father, I pray that you bless your people. Let your spirit be upon them, God. And may we continue to pant and cry out, God, for new drink, new waters, new wine, God. Father, but it's up to us to come with a fresh wine skin put new wines in. Thank you tonight, Lord. Thank you, Father, for the fresh wine skins. Let all God's people say, Amen. Come, turn around and tell somebody, you've been drinking from their well. Amen. Come on. Turn around. If you f- tell them you've been drinking from their well a little bit tonight. Come on. <laughs> As the deep. Like the deep of the water, my soul. Thank you, Michael. Pastor Tim, thank you very much. As the deep How's everybody this evening? That was weak. How is everybody else this evening? Catherine, come up here and testify a little bit. Tell everybody what God's been doing, then pray for the offering. Get your offering ready, saints. I want you to hear what God's been doing for Catherine a little bit here. Come on. If you all follow her on Facebook or or not, but I want her to testify just a little bit. Thank you, Lord. Thank you, Father. So, I'm a tither, and I'm like the poster child for tithing. I deeply and truly believe in it. I My income is only Social Security, but every month the first thing I do is write that check, and I don't even think about it. And that's what it needs to be for us. It needs to be a, such a habit that we don't even think about it. I got the bill from my neurosurgeon. It was $11,861. My part of it was this much. (laughs) I went to pick up a prescription the other day, $48.64. My part of it, 56 cents. (laughs) And God does this kind of stuff all the time. He totally gets the glory Amen. For, for, for all of that. Amen. You know, we need to tithe because it's what we're supposed to do. Not because, oh, well, if I do that, I'll get blessings like Catherine. No. Do it out of obedience because God loves obedience. Then he blesses. Amen. I can tell you about times when... I had $7 in my purse, and I said, God, what do you want? And he said, $7. He said, but it's all I have. He said, okay. So I came up. I put my five and two ones in, my, in, in the offering plate. When I left and went to pick up my purse, there was a five and two ones in my purse. <laughs> I, I have been totally broke because, you know, when you're on Social Security, sometimes that money doesn't quite make it to the end of the month. And had somebody hand me a hundred dollars because I came to church. Ooh, that could preach. I, I could go on and on and on and on, but I'm here to tell you that bl- your blessings are not always going to be monetary. This week on last week or so on Facebook, I have been posting my blessings. Because those blessings, I believe, 
are part of what God pours out on me when I'm obedient. Yes. And we all need to do that. We need to remind ourselves of all the blessings we have in our lives. And I, I just want to say one more thing, Pastor. <laughs> God's really been talking to me about revival. You know, you hear about revival everywhere. You hear it on the TV. You hear it on the radio. And so this is what he has said to me that I'm going to share with you. If revival requires a change, a change of heart, a change of spirit. So if we want revival, we have to move. We can't stand in the same place and do the same things that we've been doing over and over and over and over. How can you climb from glory to glory to glory if you're standing still? You can't. So pray more. Read the word more. There is no reason that if you can't stand, then sit on the front row. Otherwise, you need to be up here in praise and worship. Again, you need to move. You need to get closer. You need to climb higher. So I encourage everyone to find that time to move. I would also suggest that you fast Facebook. So many of us are addicted to Facebook. So for at least several days, fast Facebook, because I'll say to I'll ask somebody, did you pray today? Did you read the word today? And they'll say, oh, no, I was just so busy. I sa and I said, did you have time to get on Facebook? Because I've already seen them. I know it. And they said, yes. And I would tell them, then you need to fast Facebook so you have time for God. Okay. So, prayer. <laughs> oh, Father God, we thank you. We just thank you for all of our blessings. The, the blessing alone of the fact that you are always with us in itself is enough to rejoice. Yeah. But you have given us so much more, so much more. So, Father, as we bring our tithes and offerings tonight, we ask that you bless them. We need to bring them with joy in our heart. It should be an exciting thing to do, Father. Bless those that bring it. Bless the money that they put in. We thank you and we praise you in Jesus' name. Amen. Amen. And I have a whole sermon to go with that anytime you want. Okay. I thought we just got it. <laughs> <laughs> thank you, Lord. Well, when you're coming up here, take a look at the altar. We said something Sunday about make sure we start to bring something. And then Tuesday, we got a call from uh, Feeding America, and they've opened and, uh, this dollar store is going to give us all their extra stuff for the whole month of October. Amen. Yeah. That was just the beginning of it. I filled up Tom, pack, back of Tom's pickup truck. So, Amen. So we're just going to believe God if, if we if we're obedient and do what God wants us to do, saints. That was Catherine's whole testimony: is obedience. Just be obedient to what God tells you to do, and he's going to bless you. Sometimes it seems silly. I just had marked around somebody up here the other day. I prayed a hedge about somebody. He literally told me to walk around them. I had a lady in Boston. I had to walk around seven times. God told me to march around her seven times and then shout like Jericho, not knowing she, God told her to do that in the commons where they killed the witches the night before, and she couldn't make it because her arthritis was so bad she couldn't do the walk. And I did it the next day, and God healed her in the sanctuary. Amen. Don't tell me God's not a wonderful God. I, don't tell me He's dead. I got I got a whole movie to say God's not dead. Amen. Yeah, he's surely alive. Amen. God's still alive. He lives within me. I know He's still alive. Amen. I I woke up the other morning. I'm gonna kind of get away from Hosea for a minute. I'm gonna go to the book of uh, Sephaniah, is that right? Sephaniah. 
I, 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 Caleb helped me pronounce it, so I wrote it the way he pronounced it to me to help me understand it. I'm going to be in the ver- third chapter of this. I'm going to read the whole chapter, so you got to bear with me a little bit. But verse 17 is really the key. I'm not planning on staying here. I'm planning on preaching at one time and going. But he woke me up early in the morning, and he put this Zephaniah 317 in my spirit. For some reason, I must have read it somewhere or saw it something because it really just jumped off the page at me. It was about 3.30 in the morning. And then again this morning, he woke me up because my house alarm back door started chirping. It was shut. Everything was fine. Uh, finally, the alarm company called me and said, we have a non-emergency thing. We're gonna, they called me about 6 o'clock in the morning. They sent a signal to it, and it stopped. So I think God wanted to wake me up. Amen. So I got up and just studied again and read a little bit. But I just want to read this to you. I, I titled this message, Divine Favor. And I'm going to try to get through it as quickly as I can. I know it's a work night, school night. You know, saints, what she said about revival is the very thing that God put in my heart when we started this church years ago. We would be a church that would be constantly on the move. God's the greatest chess player in the world. So God showed me. He's the greatest chess player in the world. It's always your move, and he's got you on check. So you got to move the king. He's the king, right? you got to do something, then the king can move him, protect him or whatever. So I never really believe God always wants us to do. It's always your move. The minute you think you've done something for God, God's waiting for your next move. Uh, he already knows where you're going to go, and he's waiting for you to take it and direct you with it. Amen? So, and that is that is one of the signs of revival. And revival, part of it, we this this is a giving church. I don't have to stand up here and beg you to give. This is a giving church, and, and don't don't ever lose that, saints. I don't care how tough your times get. Don't ever lose your giving. You know, uh, last Wednesday in here, I gave twenty dollars. Gave my last twenty dollars to that young man who was in here. He put his last two cents in. I gave him twenty dollars. By the way, I did get my lunch Thursday. Somebody stopped in here and bought, took me to lunch Thursday. <laughs> So I went to testify. God is faithful. Amen. Uh, Pastor Caleb felt guilty and right now I'm kidding. <laughs> and he came up and took me to lunch and we had a little time of fellowship. Okay, Zephaniah 3 1 says, Woe to her that is filthy and polluted to the oppressed city. She obeyed not the voice, she received not correction, she trusted not in the Lord, and she drew not near to her God. Her princes were in her are roaring lions, the judges and even the wolves, they gnaw not the bones until tomorrow. Her prophets are light and treacherous persons, her priests are polluted, the sanctuary have polluted the sanctuary, and they have done violence to the law. Come on. Does this sound familiar? Does it sound familiar to you at all? Come on. And and the Lord just is in the midst of thee, and he will not do iniquity. Every morning that he bring the judgment to his light, he faileth not, but the unjust knoweth no shame. I have cut off the nations. Their towers are desolate. desolate. I made their streets waste. There, there none pass it by. Their cities are destroyed. So is there is no man and there is no inhabitants. I mean, have you ever gone into some of the inner inner cities? Detroit. I mean, I don't go. I've never been to Detroit. But just seeing the film clippings, how isolated and empty the cities, our inner cities are becoming right now. There's nothing there anymore. There are just empty shells of high rises and buildings and how they have how, how our, our this, I'm talking about America. In our cities, they become are becoming a desolate area. It's, it's amazing. Verse seven says, And for sure I say surely that thou wilt fear me, that will receive instructions, so the dwelling shall not be cut off. Howsoever I punish them, but they rose early and they corrupt all their doings. Therefore, wait on me. This is where God starts turning. It says, the, uh, that's me. Therefore, wait on me, says the Lord, until the day that I rise up to pray for my determination to gather the nations. And I will assemble the kingdoms to pour upon the, the, them my indignation. Even all my fierce anger for the earth shall be devoured with the fire of my jealousy. For then will I turn to the people of a pure language that they may call upon the name of the Lord to serve him with one consent. And beyond the rivers of Ethiopia, my supplements, and even my daughters of the depressed shall bring mine offering. In that day shall they not be ashamed of their doings, wherein that thou hast transgressed against me. For I will take away out of the midst of them that rejoice in their pride, 
and they shall no more be haughty because of my holy mountain. I will also leave in the midst of the afflicted and poor people, and they shall trust in the name of the Lord. The remnant of Israel shall not do iniquities, nor speak lies, nor shall their deceitful tongue be found in their mouths, for they shall feed and lie down, and none shall make them afraid. Verse 14, so powerful. Sing, O daughter of Zion. Shout, O Israel. Be glad and rejoice with all thy heart, O daughter of Jerusalem. That word there, Israel, it says, O Israel, be glad. It, it, re- it actually means a representative of Jacob, the ruler of God. And the word Jerusalem there, it says, O daughter of Jerusalem, is a found, that word Jerusalem there literally means a found peace. It merely means you, know, you find a peace. I don't care what situation you're in right now. I don't. I really don't. Because if you'll learn to get into the city of God, into Zion, into Jerusalem, and I don't mean the city of Jerusalem, I mean a Jerusalem that lives inside of you, the kingdom of God, the city of God that dwells in you, you are going to find the peace that you need to go forth. This is what God's trying to wake us up to, saints. We're looking for it to come upon this, and God's trying to get it out of us. Jesus came. John the Baptist made a statement. The kingdom of God is at hand. And everybody in here is born again, right? So he came and established his kingdom in the earth. Somebody point at yourself and go, earth, dirt. That's who we are. Come on. He came and established his kingdom in heaven as it is in earth. He ain't talking about any inner parts of the world. He's talking about in you. This city of Jerusalem dwells in me. If you don't want it to dwell in you, then you'll never have peace. See, I'm not biting my fingers and going crazy with everything that's going on in the world. I've read the end. We win. See, and I know that we win. Are you all with me? Verse 15, the Lord had taken away thy judgments. Thou hast cast thy enemy, the king of Israel, even the Lord in the midst of thee. Thou shalt not see, say it with me, evil anymore. In the day it shall be said in Jerusalem, fear thy, thou not to Zion, let thy hands, let not thy hands be slack. Keep Pressing forward. Keep doing things. It ain't time to sit back and twiddle your thumbs. There is a hurting, broken world out there that needs what's inside of you greater than it's ever needed it. I'm going to tell you right now, if this, if it didn't happen before with Noah's Ark, we'd be building an ark right now because God needs to destroy the earth. It's worse now than it was in those days. America, every city in America is worse than Sodom and Gomorrah. And God is holding back his wrath. He's holding it back because there is a remnant that has the city of God dwelled up inside of them. And God's going, come on, man, let it out. There's a river of life flowing out of me. Wish I could tap dance. Make the lame to walk. The blind to see. Come on. If you understood what really dwells, let me rephrase that. If you understood who really dwells in you, not what, who really dwells in you, the author and the finisher of your faith the spirit of the living God that made King David dance, the same one that raised Jesus Christ from the dead, Come on. if you really believed it, you couldn't contain it. I have a 
crazy sometimes. Because I know the power. That's why when I people like Richard aren't up running around out of that wheelchair, I get spiritually frustrated. Because I know the authority I have in the kingdom of God. And not because I'm the pastor. You got the same authority I have in the kingdom of God. We are co-equal to the throne of God with Jesus Christ. Now, that's a bold statement, but read it. It's in your Bible. He bought and paid for us to have that authority. And if we're in him and he's in us, how dare us think we don't have a right to sit with him? Then he's a liar. Many people know he's a God that cannot what? Lie. You all with me? I'm talking about divine favor. I'm talking about if you understood who you are. I Forget about whose you are. I don't want you to forget about it, but I don't want you to dwell. Too many times we dwell. I'm a child of the living God. Yes, you are. You're an extension of the living God. You're more than just a child. You are his eyes, your ears, his nose, his mouthpiece on the earth today. He created you for such a day as this to have you go forth and multiply. Some people take it literally. Kelly was here, she'd be going, Ugh. Some people understand it's also spiritual. You all with me? What are we supposed to reproduce? Christians. We're supposed to reduce kingdom people. You all with me? The Lord had taken away that. I read that, didn't I? Verse 16 said, In the day it shall be said to Jerusalem, Fear not, for I, my hands be slack. And here's the key to this whole thing. Let me, let me read it and I'm going to come back to it. I'll read these last four, then I'll come back to it. The Lord thy God is in the midst of thee. He will save. He will rejoice over thee with joy. He will, re- I love this part, he will rest in his love. He will joy over thee with singing. I will gather them which are sorrowful, for this, verse 18, for the solemn, solemn assembly who are of thee, to whom thou reproach of it was a burden. Behold, at the time I will undo all that afflict thee, and I will save her that hath haunted, and gather her that was driven out, and I will give them praise and fame in every land where they have been put to shame. And at that time I will bring you again, even to the time that I gathered you, for I will make you a name and a praise among all the peoples of the earth. Then I'll turn back your captivity before your eyes, says the Lord. There is not a good thing in the world being said about the church today, except in the church. And then we're killing ourselves in the church. This denomination is killing that denomination, and this denomination is killing this one. And this church doesn't like that church because they believe in this, and that one doesn't believe in that. So we're killing ourselves. ISIS and Muslims don't have to kill us. Just wait, wait around long enough, the church will kill itself. Come on. But God says there's a remedy. He says it right here. And those that have been cursed, nations again, are going to speak well of the church again. Nations, the Bible says here, are going to speak well again of the church because there's no other answer. There's no, come on, saints, there's no other vehicle. I, I, I believe in parachurch ministries. We have one, Proclaim Ministries, the parachurch ministry, but it's, it's submitted to a local church. I don't believe you're supposed to do anything outside of the local church. He says, I'm coming back from my church, my people, those that have submitted themselves 
one to the other. Uh, if, if I didn't have a pastor and I told you you need to submit to a pastor, you need to get out of here. A pastor that doesn't have a covering is not a man, of, man or woman of God. They've exalted themselves. My bishop had a covering. David Minor was his covering. David Minor has a group of pastors that, that, that they support one another. They, they call it their presbyters, and they support one another. Pastor Minor pastors bishops, but yet he's got a group of people around him to keep him covered. Hello? There's something about having accountability up that's so important. People say, well, God's got me covered. That's your interpretation of who God is. Yeah, God's got your back. He's got you covered. He, he's your strong tower. I'm not saying any of that stuff. But if that's the only person you're answering to, you're in trouble because you can take any interpretation any way you want to. That's why we got 1,500 different kind of Bibles. Come on, y'all with me? That's why we got denominational churches. God gave them a, He gave them a truth. He ran with it and stopped. Instead of being the complete church. See, God, we don't know it all yet, saints. You might think we, we know it all. We don't know it all yet. There's times I read something and something jumps off the page that I never saw or understood in my life before. I sit there and think, how can you read something 35 times and not see it and then one time it jumps off the page? Because the Spirit of God knew you couldn't handle it 35 times ago. Hello? You all with me? Let me do verse 17. I'm going to read some scriptures. They'll pray for you. I'm going to go home. I, I feel like my Wednesday night church gets beat up, and I don't mean to beat you up. I'm trying to encourage you. I, I'm an excitable person, if you haven't noticed that yet. Why? Because I remember where I came from. I remember what I was. And what I was, I ain't no more. Somebody said that when they were praying. Was that you a pre-prayer? What we were, what we, were we ain't no more. And, and I will never forget what I was. Because I ain't that no more. I remember eating a can of food, stealing a can of food. Same way Bishop, when we started Can Can Make a Difference. The reason it's called a can can make a difference is he was starving to death. He stole a can of baked beans, opened it with his pen knife and ate it. When he was a drug addict. Years later, he's preaching, getting ready to do Washington for Jesus in 1980. And he's traveling all over the country. And, and as he was preaching, God said to him, John, remember that can? That can sure made a difference, didn't it? He's in the middle of preaching. He said, God, why would you speak to that? He said, we're going to launch that program in America for Jesus, Washington for Jesus. We're going to start a program called A Can Can Make a Difference. That the church alone would bring one can of food every time we come into church, we get that hunger in America. You could say. They took, they rented a 22-foot truck, or 26, whatever they are, in U-Haul, when they went to Washington Stadium to do the youth rally. And they, they had to rent the stadium. It cost them $170,000 for one night. And they were worried about how they were going to get the money in because they figured the youth would never bring that big of an offering in. Four million dollar offering came in one night. Ready for this? Eight semi pickup trucks, canned goods came in. Put the kids brought into a youth route and lunch. They had so much food. They, they every soup kitchen in the D.C. area was given all they all they wanted to handle. Come pick it up. Operation buses had to send truck after truck up there from, from to line them up to put all the food in. So much food came. What a blessing. Say, I hear an amen. See, when God breathes on something, he breathes on it. And I believe God's getting ready to breathe on America. There's going to be a wave thing. Let me, let, me, let me go to verse 17. I'm way ahead of myself. Verse 17 said, The Lord thy God in the midst of thee is mighty. How many people know that? Mighty there, the word mighty right there means, in verse 17, means champion. It literally means he is a champion. He's most powerful. The word rejoice there where he says, and I will rejoice over thee with joy. The word rejoice is to be cheerful with great, great, great. This is what the definition says. It's to be cheerful with great 
great, great joy. You understand when he says, I will rejoice over thee. He says, I will rejoice over thee. God said, once you turn and stop walking in your fears and you start getting who you are out of you coming out, all of heaven, listen to me, I don't know if you understand this or not, but if God starts rejoicing in heaven over you, do you understand every angel Every person that's gone before you, that's sitting anywhere in the proximity of God, listen, that big word. What the Holy Ghost sitting around God, normally what normally what I would have said, is going to rejoice with him. And the word rejoice means to sit and sing quietly. Say it, say it spin violently about. Now, God's watching you just get a little bit more radical. Now, you got to understand that. See, God's seeing you come out of your shyness a little bit and get a little bit more radical. And you have been. That's what I'm pointing to you to. And the Bible says when he starts seeing that, he starts rejoicing over you. So when God, oh, come on, saints. I got goosebumps. Come on, you think I'm kidding? Look, when God starts rejoicing over you, when God starts rejoicing over you, all of heaven is going, oh my God, they pushed his button. <laughs> oh, what's going on down there that made God stand up uh, and start rejoicing over Tim and Kristen? What in the world are they doing? That they're starting to dance, all the heavens rejoicing, spinning violently about because of what God's doing. And you think a false religion is going to stop God? A religion that talks about a God that is a God of hate and murder? It's going to stop the one we, we sang about tonight who's a God of love? I'm an old pinochle player. Anybody here know how to play pinochle? My love will out trump your spades anytime you want to, man. <laughs> Love how trumps the best. Grace and mercy is not a weakness. What does every song you ever sing call the throne room? Place of judgment. What is it? Throne of grace and mercy. You never hear the throne of God being called the judgment of God. There's a judgment seat, but I don't believe it's the throne that he sits on when he administers grace. Because if I could picture the judgment seat personally, it's going to be seated right next to this lake of fire that was made for one being. It wasn't made for anybody else besides Satan. And when you read your Bible clear enough, do you know if we're going to be there to help judge him? I just hope I'm close enough to watch it. That's what I want to say. Huh. You're with me. I'm telling you guys, it's so much more in this thing about love and joy and peace. Then it goes on to say here, joy, it's, the word joy there means glee, festival, spin about violently. But here's the part that I never saw before. It means screaming Singing. His eye is on the spirit. Come on. 
Any of y'all ever heard some of the old gospel singers that would sing that song like that? Come on. I don't put, see, so many times we think it's flesh. I'm starting to realize that's, that kind of thing is literally a joy that has entered their heart. Especially after reading this definition of what joy is. It's on the spell. Your job's in good hands, Tom. Don't worry about it, buddy. And I know who he watches. It's what it says. It's a screaming, singing. I just believe there's some, a sound in heaven that we don't understand yet. The travailing worship. Come on. I love that commercial. Anybody seen it since I preached it that one day? I bet that guy get ready to have a baby. He comes in with a catcher. He comes in with that catcher, Peavy. Catcher's name, Peavy. He says, honey, honey, I found him. but can't find a doctor. He's, he's going to help us deliver his baby. What do you mean? He says, I got a glove. Like the doctor, I got a glove too. He said, I always come through in a, in a pinch just like the doctor would. <laughs> she goes, no, he ain't there my baby. He ain't there my baby. I don't believe when a woman is giving birth that she worries about singing on tune. <laughs> I got a feeling. <laughs> There's a scream that is coming out. But you know why I used that instead of any other thing? What comes out of the birthing? Life. From the birthing comes life. And there's a joy. There's a joy. I have been in rooms after they brought the baby, and they laid the baby up on the mother, and they gave the father the option to cut the cord. And then it's, isn't it funny, that quickly, the mother's pain is gone. She sees that baby laying on her. That quickly. Now, she may still be hurting, but that pain is gone when she sees the joy. Well, you, I hope you're getting this a little bit. When there is a birthing in the spirit and there's a travailing going on, stop worrying about whether you sound spiritual or not. I promise you that wife, that mama giving birth don't sound spiritual. Come on. There ain't nothing spiritual going on in there except life. How many people know what we have to offer is the greatest gift ever given? Eternal life. And it dwells in us. It dwells in the city of God, in Jerusalem. The new Jerusalem. That song, see it. That song they sang the other day, where's Billy? They sang that song. That's one of my favorite songs, in case you didn't catch that. That's the reason they sang it for me on my birthday last Wednesday about uh, John, John the Revelator. John the Revelator. So I'm seeking God coming down. Come on. Oh, you weren't here. They sang John the Revelator for me on Wednesday night. And it was so beautiful. You know, I just love that song. I like the beat, I like what it's singing. But there's a city that dwells in us. Let me give you some scriptures and we'll go home real quick. Psalms 89, 17 says, For thou, this is about divine favor. For thou art the glory, for thou art the glory of thy of their strength, and in thy favor our horn shall be exalted. For thou art the glory. How many people know we we are, you are the glory of God? The next couple of weeks, I'm going to be preaching on Sunday mornings about the Ark of the Covenant a little bit. I'm going to be preaching about the glory of God, the glory cloud, and how, they, how Moses established the tabernacle, the, the, the tent of meetings, the tabernacle of Moses, 
we're going to be preaching about that the next couple of weeks here, so I don't want to get ahead of myself too much. But it's it's going to, I think it's going to be powerful. God's really revealing some things in these dines about that to me. Isaiah 30, 18 says, And therefore will the Lord wait that he may be gracious unto you, and therefore will he be exalted, that he may have mercy upon you. For the Lord is a God of judgment. Blessed are they that wait upon the Lord. Wait for him. That wait for him. That wait for him. That just don't mean sitting and waiting. It also means waiting on him and doing things. Put your hand to the axis. But don't outrun God. Don't get ahead of God. There's people in this room that got calls in your life. I believe in placing you. When God says now, I'll send you out now. That's the word of the Lord. I'll bring you up when God says bring you up. I, I don't, I'm not one that likes to give titles because titles sometimes causes people to think they've arrived. And when you get that arrived attitude, then I want to smack you. Because none of us have arrived. I didn't get ordained. I was on staff for 20 years. I was a licensed minister. Didn't get ordained until I got sent out here and they had to ordain me. Why? Because Bishop used to hate to give titles. If I need you to be ordained to do weddings up here, I'll ordain you. But in Virginia Beach, I could do everything. Weddings, Virginia is a, a commonwealth, and all you got to do is be licensed to do all that. He said, the word reverend is not even in the Bible. Be reverent, but the word reverend is not in the Bible. Honestly, an ordained reverend is nothing but an ordained elder. There are only three official offices in the house of God. It's apostle, elder, and deacon. Hello? Apostle is also the bishop, overseer. Elder and deacon. That's the three governmental offices in the house of God. All the rest of them are man-made. Somebody say, well, me. Isaiah 60.10 says, And the sons and the daughters shall build up. Now, there's, there's prophets in all the five-fold ministry. I'm not talking about the five-fold ministry. I'm talking about the governmental ministry, all right? There's a difference. There really is a difference. And I'll explain to you some other time. And the sons and of strangers shall build their walls, as Isaiah 60. And the king shall minister unto thee, for my wrath I smote thee, but my favor have I, I have mercy on thee. We're talking about divine favor. We're talking about divine favor, the favor of God. I'd rather have God's mercy than his blessing. That was weak. Lynn, I agree. I'd rather have his mercy. Because how many people know we're going to blow it again? You're going to sin. Come on. Don't, don't sit there like you're never going to sin again. Some of you are probably sinning right now thinking, that man's lost his mind. We're all going to fall short of the glory of God again. I'd rather have God's mercy knowing my everlasting life is still intact because of his mercy than I would just being blessed walking around with fat pockets. I can't take it with me. You hear me tell you a joke about a guy showing up the, at the gate with a barrel of gold. He stand at the gate, barrel of gold, and Gabriel said, what are you doing? I said, I want to bring it in with me. I saved my work, my whole life to bring it in. I'll go ask God. We don't allow that kind of stuff here. I'll go ask God. God said, it's okay if you want to bring pavement in. He don't care. All it is up there is pavement. It means nothing. Amen? Come on. That's what's inside of us. It means I'd rather have his mercy. Somebody say, thank you, Lord. Isaiah 62, 4 says, And thou shalt be no term forsaken, neither shall the land any more be termed desolate, but thou shalt be called, whatever his name is, Hepaz, what? Anybody going to help me with that one? And thy land, Beulah, I know that one. For the Lord delighteth in thee, and thy land shall be married. That's pretty cool. The land shall be married. I, I don't have time to preach all those. You understand that, saints? The land again. I'm mean, not talking necessarily the physical land. I'm talking about this land. Please, first in the natural, then the spiritual, remember what you're made of. And when the, I had somebody argue with me once about in heaven as it is in earth. Saints, we don't go into the earth. That's not made for us to be cave dwellers. In earth means you. When it talks about a desolate land, it's, yeah, it's talking about, you can have a, de a desert, 
but he's talking about you becoming a desert, you becoming dry. Your earth has dried up because you haven't allowed the waters to escape. It talks about keep yourself moldable. Let the hand of God, in other words, keep your clay moist. So he can keep molding you. He's not done with you. If he was done with you, you'd be gone. My father-in-law today, the reason Kim's not with us, he's celebrating his 88th birthday today. I sit and talk to him about sports. I was sitting, I think I shared this, I might have shared it out loud to some people. I was talking to him about sports once. I said, do you know that Tippy Martinez picked off three guys and one inning off of first base? All three outs, he picked them off of first base. He said, yeah, that was 1982. And the first guy he picked off was this guy. He came in the relief. The guy was on first. He picked him off, walked the next guy, and he picked him off. He picked that guy off. Next guy got a base hit, and he picked him off on the first pitch. And he named every guy. Now, he sat and told me the story, and I can't remember it. But he's 88 years old. Oh, it gives me hope or not. It kind of makes me go, man, what am I doing here? Here's a guy that keeps his mind fresh. He lets things. He says, sports-wise. He said, now ask me somebody's name outside of sports. I don't know. Half time, I don't remember your name. I said, my, 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 my daughter Kim's husband. He said, you'd play professional sports. I didn't know everything about you. I mean, <laughs> but I thought, how sharp. We're able to do it. Do you understand what this is inside of you? That was squishy, bro. You better go on a diet, man. I felt like mine used to feel. I'm teasing. That was the, that was the reverse. That's what that was. Right? <laughs> but the rivers of God that dwell in society. Rivers of God that dwell inside of you. I had to get away from him. I kept looking and laughing. Are so important in keeping you fresh. They're so important in your walk with God. That's not a thought that makes sense. Why? Because of who you are and what you're called to do. Let me get out of here. Let me finish up. Where was I? What was I on? 65, 19, Isaiah 65, and I will rejoice in Jerusalem and joy in my people. And the voice of weeping shall be no more heard in her, nor the voice of crying. See, saints, that day is going to come when you don't have to travail anymore. There won't be a travailing in childbirth. There won't be a travailing in the things of the Spirit. Because we're going to be with him. Yeah, I have many of you ever said, when I get to heaven, I'm going to ask God this, or I'm going to ask God that. I'm, I'm going to ask. The Bible says to be in his presence to have all knowledge. So when we're with him, <laughs> some of us think we do anyhow. <laughs> but to be with him is to have all knowledge. And What's going to happen is we're going to walk in the fullness of what God intended us to walk on the earth. If Adam and Eve wouldn't have fallen, do you realize what the fullness of the intent of man was to be? Yeah. Mm -mm -mm. Jeremiah 32, 41 says, Yeah, I will rejoice over them good, and I will plant them in a land assuredly with my whole heart and with my whole soul. God's going to plant in you in a place. Well, I'm going to preach about a place in a couple of weeks. He's going to put you in the, the place. Somebody say the place. And you'll get it in a couple of weeks. Hosea 1, 10 says, Yeah, yet the number of the children of Israel shall be as the sands of the sea which cannot be measured in their number, and it shall come to pass that in the place where it is said unto them, ye are not my, ye are not my people, there shall be said unto them, ye are the sons of the living God. 
the place you're going to be placed into. You're not going to be of that people. You are a son of the living God. And God's going to plant you. He's going to set you. He's going to put you there. How many people know God's plan hasn't changed yet? You're still the sons of Abraham. We are the seed of Abraham. We are his promise. That's why when someone gets saved and Brother Bob's church and all still has six or seven people in there, that's in our downline. It goes all the way to Abraham. That's why when it says, when I gather you all together, come on, church, when I gather you all together, you will be more than the sands of the sea. Great is in, the, in us than is in the world. We're greater numbers than the Muslims are. We keep hearing how much the and in this country, we keep hearing how great the Muslim religion is growing, and overseas they're turning to Christianity because it doesn't work. Read your, by the millions, it says, they're coming in overseas. They're turning because the power of God is falling. When we got governments and we got judges breaking our constitutional rights in this country, how do you expect God's blessings to follow us? Amos 5.15 Hate the evil, somebody say that, and love and establish in the gate. It may be that the Lord God of hosts will be gracious unto the remnant of who? Of Joseph. Come on, church. He just may bless us. President Bush prophesied something. On December, on September the 12th, 2001, when did 2001? When he said, the 12th, when he made the statement, this battle is not against terrorism in the United States. It is good against evil. And it keeps getting worse. And the thing is, we have put people in authority. We wanted change. And that was the that was his whole message. We wanted change. And we got it. Israel wanted a king. And God gave him Saul. Hello? Only king I want is seated on the throne of God. I like to have a righteous leader that will follow the king's voice. Say amen. Closing, let's keep our eye on good and not evil. I put it down here, even wrote it in here. We are the seed of Abraham. We do serve the God of our fathers. They serve the one and the only living God. Say amen. Saints, I, I hope you understand what I'm trying to preach here. I'm not trying to scare you. I'm just trying to preach the truth to you. Understand. Please understand this. I don't care what you do in the rest of your life. Just realize you have divine favor. If you'll just understand what, I'll say it again. Forgive me, Lord. Whom dwells in you and what power comes from. You're going to be unstoppable. Unstoppable. Signs and wonders are going to follow this house everywhere we go. Not just at church. Stop waiting for lines just to show up at church. They should show up behind you in the grocery store. People should pull your car over and say, I don't know what you got, but there is something about you. Yeah, anybody ever watched the count? Anybody watched counting cars sent me? Anybody watch County? The way he pulls people over for their cars. I guy sees a nice little car. He pulls over. Man, pull over, pull over, brother man. Pull over, brother man. I want to talk to you about your car. 
Oh, what a nice car. How many hundred dollar bills would it take to buy? People should be pulling you over going, I don't know what it is about you, but my God, there's something shining all over your place. Come on. Come on, I'm serious. I have never been more serious in my life. When you walk into some place, they should say, oh my, what do you have that I ain't got? We went to a restaurant there. I took my father, my father-in-law, to Village Inn for lunch for his birthday again. He loves Village Inn on Wednesdays. Can anybody tell me why? Free pie. <laughs> he loves free pie. So we went down there, and he got. Him. Anyhow, we're getting ready to leave, and the manager checks us out. She walked by me a couple times. Said, "Can you go right?" Yes, ma'am. She has such a pretty smile. Oh, my father-in-law, be careful. <laughs> she, no, I'm not flirting. I'm like, you know, you know, you know me, I'm carrying on. Like, That's my father-in-law, be careful. So anyhow, I get up the line. She goes, no, there's just something. You're sitting there, and it's just something about you. What is it? It's um, blood washed, blood bought, spirit filled, head slapping, tongue talking, Holy Ghost filled preacher. I should have known. She said, I'm, I'm, I'm born again. She said, that's what you really need. That's what you really need. She says, and you're so good to your dad. Somebody's got to be good to him. <laughs> He's my father-in-law, and my, my, my wife treats him terrible. <laughs> he went, no, he went, no, she doesn't. No. She goes, I, the church you pastor, and I told her. She's right down here. On uh, racetrack road. She said, I'm going to stop off there one time. I bet you have fun. I said, Oh, yeah. They've got to start seeing. And they can't see it if you veil it. I'm trying to explain to you you have the divine favor of God. Let it leak. Let it come out of you. There should be gullies of living water should rush out of you. Right? From anybody walking around knee deep, by the time you leave their room, they should be swimming. You all with me? Everybody here still saved after I preached? I ain't talking anybody out of it? Brother Wayne, you still saved? You were gone awful long time. You still stay, brother? <laughs> okay. <laughs> Please don't walk out of here. We're shorthanded today. We got to set up for CCMAD in the morning. I mean, for Saturday. So we need some help. We need some. We need some help in here just to get all this stuff. We got to weigh this and send the count off and all that and and all that. So uh, we got a scale here to do it. Please stick around. Try to help out as much as you can. Amen. Father, thank you. Bless your people as we leave this place. Allow it to leak everywhere we go, Father. Allow there be this gully washing all over this area. If we go to our workplaces tomorrow, if we go out to eat tonight, Lord, bless them. And let all God's people say amen. 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 Let's do it quickly, saints. Let's break down so everybody can get